Hello, I'll be talking about the Iraq war. This video will be split into two parts, before the Iraq war and the actual Iraq war. I'll start with before the Iraq war. There was two sides in the war, so I'll start with the Mapuche peoples. The Mapuche people have been living in Araucania for a solid century or so. They've been very preserved and peaceful, besides a few internal conflicts of course, just like most pre-industrial society. As time progressed, the Mapuche people began expanding, moving further and further away from each other, hence becoming different tribes. Some stayed in the mountains, others moved down in the valley, and even more traveled into the forests. This happened from 600 to 500 BC till the beginning of the Iraqo War, when some random colonial powerhouse landed in Araucania. Those colonial powerhouse are of course the Spaniards. The Spaniard were making history, being part of the new world order and invading country. From the Spanish Empire, Specialists of both exploring and fighting, called Conquistador, were the first to lead the New World era. Having much more advanced technology than all the American countries at that time, it was destiny that they conquer most of America. The Spaniards just finished the conquest of the Inca Empire and the Aztec Empire. On to part 2, the actual Rocco War. The Rocco War began with the Battle of that, which pitted the superior, more advanced, tactically correct Spaniard against the Mapuche people which ended with a massacre of the Mapuche people at the hand of Gomez de Avaredo and his men. With this, the Spaniards continued their conquest of Chile, which created the campaign of Pedro de Valdivia, a conquistador, started the nine-year campaign, which purpose was to capture and secure the city of Santiago, which was destroyed in 1541 by the Mapuche people. With the Spaniards securing the city, they began working on improving and transforming the city, later on making it the biggest city in Chile, as well as the capital. This takes us on to the founding of Cancipion, Imperial, and Valdivia, which in short was an exhibition started again by the Spaniard in hope of reuniting the shore of the bay of Concepcion to the shore of the Bio Bio River. The exhibition proved to be a success, and before long, another exhibition, this time only led by Valdivia, which established Fort of Tucapel, Perrin, Confines, and Araco. This again was a success, but this time the Mapuche decided that they had enough and appointed Capulican as a military leader who was able to successfully capture the fort of Tucapel and successfully defend it as well from the first counterattack, making this the first great Mapuche uprising. This will also be the last of Pedro de Valdivia, as he was killed in the same battle. The Spaniards were beginning to take the Mapuche as a threat and began strengthening their force along the two other forts. Following that, Vilaga led a devastating raid against the Mapuche settlement near the edge of Araucania, causing havoc and creating famines and epidemics for the Mapuche. This in turn created more hostile Mapuche, which later on joined the fight. Of course, the raid this raid won't have gone unnoticed, as this inspired Lutaro, who was second in command after Copolicon in the Battle of Tucapel, to start his own campaign. The campaign started out promising with a great assault on Santiago, forcing the Spanish army and many civilians to retreat. But from then on, the campaign began a downward spiral that would lead to the death of Lutario in the Battle of Matuquito. For convenience sake and my sake, I'll be skipping the campaign of Copolicon and Garcia that. But to summarize, Kupalikan was killed and the Mapuche lost. However, the Mapuche began preparing for the second uprising, as you'll soon see. The Mapuche, after the defeat was now united as one force, began acting on their plan, which began with a few assassinations, but led to an all-out war. The assassination came upon the new Spanish government's son, which caused him to flee, leaving his relative Pedro de Valagra in charge. The new governor first move was to bring all of his force out of Araco, giving the Mapuche more resources and maneuverability, which will make a big difference later on. With this, the Mapuche began putting their plan into effect by first surrounding Concepcion and cutting off all outside aid for the city, creating a siege. Although the Mapuche were tipped for an easy victory, winter came early, forcing a Mapuche retreat, ending the Second Great Mapuche Rebellion and extending the war, which now is dragging on. There was a 30 year period of Spanish domination and campaign before again, you guessed it, another Mapuche uprising. But this was a chance for the Spaniards to end the Iraq War. And they bottled it. The Spaniards now have lost 11 governors in just 60 years, proving their conquest of Chile was a failure. But they kept trying. The Mapuche, in a span of 6 years, ransacked many Spanish cities, but ultimately returned back to Morocco in the end. For the next 50 years, the Spanish and Mapuche would have a sword of peace, but this peace didn't last, and before long, more war. Again, there was another Mapuche uprising, this time only a major uprising, not a great one, and this time led by Clenteru. This uprising only pushed back Spaniard force, giving the Spaniard a reason to keep attacking Araco. This then caused a campaign of that and that, which then accomplished much for the Spaniard. 
besides making peace with the Mapuche, which lasted for 30 years. Once more, peace ended with another uprising for the Mapuche from 1723 to 1784. In 1793, the Spaniards finally made peace with the Mapuche people, officially ending the war. Sorry if there wasn't much information needed on the war, and also for the long video. As always, thanks for watching, and hopefully you enjoyed this video. Goodbye!